Hello, grade seven. So this week we're going to continue the chapter, chapter two, mass. And uh, this is the second lecture in chapter two out of three lectures. So let's start. This is the objective that we're going to cover during this week's lecture. So you guys will be able to measure the mass of a solid and a liquid using a balance. Let's go. And section three, it says measure the mass of a solid. So I need to find the mass of a solid. In order to do that, we're gonna use this simulation that says balance here. So you can simply click on this and it'll take you to this page. It says, using a two-arm balance and a box of known masses, we intend to measure the mass of an object A. So let's see how can we measure the mass. Place the object A on one of the plates of the two-arm balance. Does the needle indicate zero? So uh, we have different objects here, a plant, a watermelon, a dog, a, a pumpkin, and a baseball uh, ball, okay? So I bring the ball, I put it on one plate. What happened? Okay, the plate that the ball is on, it went down. So the needle, does it indicate zero? When it's in the middle, it does indicate zero. Okay, now this is like a different uh, two arm balance, different than the one we've seen in the previous slides, but it's, it does the same thing. So it, do, it doesn't indicate zero, no. So I say here, I simply say that no, it does not indicate zero, no. Now it says here, place labeled masses on the other arm of the two arm balance until equilibrium is reached. Are the two plates at the same horizontal level? Let's see. So I need to place some labeled masses. These labeled masses, you can see them here. So these are like uh, objects of known masses. So like I know that the mass of this object is five kilograms. I know that the mass of this object is 500 grams. Unlike these objects, unlike the dog and the pumpkin, I don't know the masses of these, okay? But these known or labeled masses, I know their mass. I'm gonna choose, let's see, if I chose like 500, whoa, 500, it's much, it's much heavier than the ball. So I, equilibrium will not be reached that way. So we choose a smaller one. Okay, that's good. How about another 100? No, it won't work. How about 50? Perfect. So now equilibrium is reached, right? They are at the same horizontal level. So are the two plates at the same horizontal level? We say yes. Okay, so we say yes, the equilibrium is reached. Great. What does the needle indicate at equilibrium? So at equilibrium, the needle indicates zero. Okay, so this here we have is zero. Write down the values of the labeled masses used. So what did we use? We used 100 grams, so we write 100 grams. What else? Also 50 grams. What can you conclude? We can conclude that the mass of an object is measured using a balance. So we say, we conclude that we say the mass of a solid is measured using a balance. Okay, so yeah, this is the simulation. So I will repeat the steps so that you remember them. Uh, the steps of how to measure the mass of a solid. So determine to determine the mass X of an object A, which is a solid, calibrate the two arm balance to have equilibrium when both arms are empty. Normally the needle indicates zero in that case. So you can see that the needle 
is indicating zero. It means that these two plates are on the same horizontal level. We have equilibrium. Okay, so we just make sure that this uh, state, uh, that this uh, two arm balance looks like that. Now, place the object A on one of the two plates of the two arm balance. So you place the object, which is a solid, on one arm of the two arm balance. What happens to the needle? It goes to the side that is heavier. So it's like uh, it inclines or it rotates to the side that is heavier. Okay, what do we do now? Then we place labeled masses of total mass M. You can see we place different labeled masses on the other plate until equilibrium is re-established. So until we have equilibrium again, okay? So it goes back to zero. See the needle is in the middle now. It means we have equilibrium when the needle moves back to its initial position. So what happens now? Okay, so how? what is the mass of that solid? When equilibrium is reached, M and X are equal. What? Like the total mass M and the mass of the solid X, they are equal. Hence, we would have measured X. So in this case, can you find the total mass M? Let's see. It's 10 grams plus 5 grams plus 1 gram which makes it a total of 16 grams. So what is the mass of, object, of the solid here? It is the same as the mass uh, M, right? Because we have equilibrium, so it is also 16 grams. And just like that, you found the mass of the solid. One last thing, you saw the two arm balance. It's like uh, it needs some work, you know, for you to measure actually the mass. There is an easier way to do it, okay, and a faster way, which is the digital balance. Wow, digital balance, it shows numbers. So it simply gives me the mass of the object without me placing labeled masses and wait until equilibrium is reached and, you know, all that. No, as simple as that, it gives me the, uh, the mass of the object. So this is a, you can see it here, this is a digital balance. It says, place a bowl filled with a flower on the arm of a digital balance. So let's put a bowl filled with flower. Great. Turn on the digital balance with the on off bottom. So it has an on off bottom, we turn it on. Okay, so what did we get? Write down the mass of the bowl of flour. Okay, so the mass is 0 0.356 grams. Wow, that was easy. Complete the following. The digital balance allows the determination of the mass of an object by a simple Reading, I simply just read off the screen. So by a simple reading, okay? So it's so easy, guys. We can use a digital balance uh, in a so in an easy way. So we simply just read the indication. We read on the screen the mass, okay? So what you need to remember about a digital balance is that using a digital balance is simple. It allows the measuring of the mass of an object with a great precision. You see how great precision it has? Okay, it's 0 0.356 grams by a simple reading. So I simply read off the screen. Now we're going to talk about how we can measure the mass of a liquid. Can we measure it the same way we measure the mass of a solid, like place the liquid, same way that, like as we place the solid on one plate and then just, uh, you know, place uh, some labeled masses on the other until equilibrium is reached. Let's see if I can just simply put the liquid on the pan. What will happen? Whoa, the liquid will spill. So I can't just simply pour, let's say, water on this pan. 
okay? Because the liquid takes the shape of the container. It has an indefinite shape. It is not like the solid, which has a definite shape. So I can't measure the mass of the liquid this way. There must be some other way we can measure the mass of a liquid. Mm, what do you think? I should put it in what? We should put the liquid in a container. Now let's see. Okay, so to measure the mass of a liquid, what we will do first, as we said, we can't simply place the liquid on one pan. It will spill and we won't be able to find the mass. So we have to use a container. So the first thing we need to do is that we place an empty beaker or empty container on one of the plates of the two arm balance, just like that. Place labeled masses on the other arm until equilibrium is reached. So we place also on the other arm labeled masses such that equilibrium is obtained and the needle is uh, simply uh, zero. Okay, is directed towards zero. So now what does the needle indicate? It indicates now zero because we have equilibrium. So we say zero. Write down the mass M1 of the labeled masses used. So I need to find M1, which is the mass of the beaker, right? So M1 is equal to what we said that the mass, when equilibrium is obtained, the mass of the first pan is equal to the mass of the second pan, okay? The object on the second pan. So M1 is equal to five grams. Complete the following. M1 is the mass of the blank beaker. So the mass of the empty beaker or uh, of the, let's say, full beaker. No, it's the mass of the empty beaker. Okay, it's empty. Now we poured some water in the beaker. Add more labeled masses until equilibrium is reached again. So we poured water here. Okay, and then of course this pan just went down and then we had to add another mass so that equilibrium uh, was, was attained again. Okay, so the needle is, uh, is directed at zero again. Write down the new value M2 of the labeled masses used. So I have a new value. Okay, I have two labeled masses now. So we have 10 grams plus... Okay, since I have two, the other one is what? Is five grams. Can you add them? Yes, they are 15 grams. Complete the following. M2 is the mass of the what? Filled beaker. Okay, not the empty beaker. Now this M2 is the mass of the filled beaker. So the mass of the water is simply the what m2 is simply the difference between them so it's m2 which is the mass of the filled beaker minus m1 which is the mass of the uh, empty beaker let's try to find them so it's 15 grams minus 10 minus 5 grams equals to 10 grams okay so that's it, we just found the mass of a liquid. Okay, so let's, uh, let's review how we measure the mass of a liquid. Okay, so first of all, we place an empty container, as you can see on one of the plates of the two arm balance, then we equilibrate how by adding labeled masses of total value M1, to the other plate and then m1 becomes what it becomes the mass of the empty beaker second step is that we add the liquid of which mass is to be determined we don't know the mass of this liquid which is m to the empty container we equilibrate by adding labeled masses of total mass m2 now the total mass of these are m2 m2 now is the mass of the filled beaker so the mass of the liquid is simply equal to the difference between the total mass of the filled container and the mass of the empty container. 
So at equilibrium, the mass of the poured liquid is M, which is equal M2 minus M1. M2 is the mass of what? Of the filled container, and M1 is the mass of the empty container. And this is how we can find the mass of a liquid. And now let's apply this using this simulation. So you guys just click on the PDF that I sent and let's go to the lab. So it's going to open up this page for you. So you go next, next, and next. This is the page that we need. So you can see we have a digital balance here and not a two pan balance. So it's a different example than that in the slides. The more, the merrier, right? So we have an empty beaker and a bottle of water. So what I will do is that I will turn on the balance. Let's turn it on and I will put the empty beaker. This is how we measure the mass of a liquid, remember? So we first measure the mass of the empty beaker and then we measure the mass of the filled beaker and then we subtract M2 minus M1. So let's see. So we have M1, which is the mass of the empty beaker. M1 equals to 49.1 grams. Perfect. Now let's fill this beaker with some water. So you bring this water bottle, you put it here and then you squeeze on it. So let's try to fill it. You can fill it as much as you want. Okay, so I will stop. Let's say now that's good enough okay so now we have a new mass this is the mass of the filled beaker right so i have now a filled beaker let me write it down so i have a filled beaker okay its mass is m2 which is 79.9 grams so what is the mass of the liquid inside of the beaker what is the mass of the water inside the beaker mass of water remember the formula m equals m2 minus m1 the mass of the filled beaker minus the mass of the empty beaker so let's write them down i have 79.9 minus 49.1 which is equal let me use a calculator so 79.9 minus 49.1 we get 30.8 grams. Okay, so this is how we find the mass of a liquid. And that is it. We're done with this week's lecture. I hope you guys found it interesting and fun. And I want you to try using the simulations at home. So yeah, that is it. Try to solve the worksheet and uh, I'll see you in the Zoom live. Take care and bye-bye.